Hello and welcome back. It's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth and today we're playing Office Plan. And here is a, a picture of Sleuth just, I guess, studying very closely an Office Plan, presumably as part of trying to solve a case. Maybe just, you know, timing of events, seeing how quickly somebody can get through from one, from A to B. Who knows? Um, now, if you've seen the last video, you may have noticed that I was having a few monitor issues. Essentially, my monitor will go blank and it will just disconnect the camera. It was just chaos. Um, I've not exactly sorted it out. All I know is it just it stopped happening for a while. Um, so fingers crossed we're not going to have any issues with today's video. And it's just like, you know, it wasn't just the camera. It was like, uh, sorry, it wasn't just the monitor. It was the monitor was going, the camera was going. It was like anything that was connected via peripherals was just having a bad time. So fingers crossed. Let's take a look at today's puzzle. So, office floor plan by willpower, and, you know, the classic kind of picture in a Sudoku grid. It's just, you can clearly see, you know, tons of kind of almost like structural lines. You can almost see as if there is like a building structure on the outside, you know, doorways or corridors, maybe windows. Um, as always, you know, a picture says a thousand words. And uh, we've got the following set of rules. So normal Sudoku rules apply. So that means place the digits one to nine in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. No repeats allowed in any of those. Now we've got two more variant rules. I'll probably cover the killer one because it's probably the less useful one for today. I mean, it's, it will be useful, I'm sure. There's nothing on this that I'm sure is wasted from Will. But um, let's start with killer. So number in cages, sum to the number in the top left corner of the cage. And you can see all of these outlined cages with this dashed line. They have a number in the top left corner. And all that's saying is these two cells that are defined by this cage have to sum up to 14. These two have to sum up to 11. These two have to sum up to 8. Right, and today, we're clearly with just the sheer volume of red lines on the screen, you know it's going to be all about Dutch Whispers today. So Dutch Whisper, numbers on red lines are at least four apart from their neighbor on the line. Numbers may repeat on the lines if are allowed by other rules. Yeah, so this is going to be tricky. So German Whispers, sorry, German Whispers, Dutch Whispers. Essentially, you need to be four or more away. And I'm going to deliberately pick one over here. So if I place a one this time, normally, if you've seen some of the previous videos on German whispers, I would say this would have to be six or more away and you oscillate from low to high back to low. No, 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 not today. Today, I can do weird things like place a five on this line because it is four or more away from a one. Um, I can then place a nine in here and then go back down to a low digit. So, and I'm not going to use red today, normally I do. You can do this very strange setup where I go from blue, as in a low digit, to a neutral five, to a high digit. And rather than oscillating from low and high, I end up sort of almost like shifting that oscillation along. So, I think this is the thing to sort of watch out for. And helpfully, Willpower has given us tons of fives to get us started. So, I think he's leading us that way. Uh, I hope I haven't given too much away. If you feel like studying this office plan and uh, figuring out what the mystery is, link will be in the description down below as usual. And with that said, let me restart the clock and see how I get on. So my first temptation is basically to figure out where all the fives are. I think if I try and, uh, if I try and solve this without figuring out where the fives are, I'm only going to get into trouble. So, can I actually place any fives? I think is almost the immediate question that comes to mind. So, five can't be on a T-junction. Here's a knowledge for you. If I put a five in here, remember, five is quite a restricted digit, almost very similar to the fours and sixes, in that it has to be surrounded by ones and nines. If I have a five on a T-junction, I have three different neighbors, I can't put a five down because now I need to put one and nine three times in the same box. So that's not going to work. In this box, just Sudoku, 
and Dutch Whispers tells me this is not it. That's the only place for a five. Kind of tricky to spot. Um, actually on the six, because this is either a two four cage, which is too close on a, on a Dutch Whisper. There are only two apart. This has to be one five. And this five actually tells me the order. That's one, that's five. So we're actually getting digits in under a minute. Um, love it. We'll keep going. More fives, please. More fives. Fives are in one of these two. Fives are in one of these two. Five is in this massive square over here. And I, at this point, I don't have enough information to place any of them. So am I going to? Why not? Right. The fact that we actually have a digit that we actually know, and we have a five. And remember, whenever there is no five on the path, it definitely oscillates because it will go from. What am I doing wrong? I can do this. Yeah. It will essentially oscillate steadily between blue and orange, blue being one, two, three, or four, orange being six, seven, eight, or nine, and gray being the five. May as well just sort that out now. And I've now got four low digits. That's got to be high, which, because I've got a five in the row, actually gives me the remainder. Just careful which ones I actually highlight. These are low. Again, five in the square, this gives me the two highs, this low, don't know what these are. This is going to be 14 cage is actually quite interesting because I could, I could, hang on, no, six and eight is too close, just like the one and five were on six. So this is actually forced to be a five and a nine. Because there's two ways of doing 14 in two cells. It's either 5, 9, which works because they're four apart, or 6, 8, which doesn't work because they're, on, they're only two apart. So that forces the fives in here. What a lovely set of interactions you've got there, Will. Again, like just ingenious construction. Clearly very, very deliberate. Now, I don't know what these are, and I am still tempted to maybe color them, maybe. So what I'll do is go with purple. Is that visible? Yep. Green. I think that will be visible. And you can go all the way around to the end because obviously you've got four purples. Don't know if it's low or high and four greens. Again, don't know if it's low or high, but that allows me to basically go around with greens in here purples in there. I can keep pushing this. And again, I'm doing this with confidence in cages that already have a five. Once I place these two fives, essentially that oscillation is going to be solid from here on. Um, that's green, green again, green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all good because we've got fives again looking in all of these. And therefore, this is pretty well known. These are purple. Unfortunately, don't know which is which. I'll think about that momentarily. Again, don't know which is which here. Yep, yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. Is this as far as I could take it? Well, there is a purple and a green in here, meaning I've used all purples, all sorry, all four greens between these. This has to be purple. And then look at that there is a purple and a green in here so I have three purples at that point and if purple is blue I'd have five blues so purple is orange green is blue and we're very nearly very nearly have colored the entire grid uh, remember this is not a five I've restricted the fives in here because of this five so that is definitely an orange and again, I can actually color these. That's known. I've got four in box five. This is also known. I don't know what these two are. Once I figure them out, I, I guess I can figure out the rest of this. And that's probably... 
I was going to say it's about probably, but I mean, technically I can do the following. It's just I'm not sure how useful this is. Because again, the fives are not so far on all of these. So they're going to oscillate between, I'm going to go again with green and purple. I think that's what I picked last time. And then we just need to figure out what is the actual color in here. And do I have enough information? Of course not. No, 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 hang on, hang on. Three purples with an orange and blue means purples are done. So one of these is essentially a green gray cell. And I don't, again, I don't know which one is green. I just need, I know that I have to have three greens given I've got one of each on the ends. I feel like I've pushed this as far as I can do. How about actually think about some numbers, some Dutch whispers and some cages. So 12, reasonably restricted, reasonably. I mean, in the sense that I can't have seven and five too close, but I can have eight and nine to go with four and three. So not as restricted. One of these is a two now. Tempted to think about where sixes go and stuff like that and where fours go. But I'm not sure I want to go down that route just yet. I will, I'm sure, at some point. But um, I can go as low as seven. So seven, eight or nine. Not nine because it's already placed in the box. So this is two or three. Three and seven are exactly four apart. So that's as close as I dare. Four and six won't work. They're only two apart. I don't know. So I can't do six, five, can't do seven, four either. So this is eight or nine with two or three. And if I'm honest, none of these are really helping. Eight, knowing that they're different polarities means I could do one seven six two and that's it I can't do three five because there's a five in the box and I just I don't even know the order of these so I'm not really sure I want to actually here's more digits that's one that's got to be nine remember five has to be surrounded by one and nine so I actually knew what this color was all along I just ignored it have a think about this. I've got three blues, a fourth one in here. Green can't be blue. Green is orange. What did I just do? Yeah. Green is not blue. It is orange. Purple is blue. And I've very, very nearly colored the entire grid at this point. Now, remember what I said earlier. The eight could have been one, seven, two, six. Well, this one is doing some work. That's two. That's six. Um, unfortunately, because I don't know if this is blue or not, all I know is one is in one of two cells based on this one. Um, what else do I know? This is three or four, and then there is another three or four up here somewhere. Not helpful. I know that one is in one of these two cells. Not helpful. Is it maybe time to do just a bit of the hard work and just stop putting off thinking about each of these cells and the Dutch constraints that they are experiencing? May well be the case. So minimum this can be a seven. Therefore, the min minimum this can be is a seven. Sorry, minimum this can be is a three. Therefore, the minimum this can be is a seven. I can't put a six on here. Technically, I could put a six on either of these. I could do six with a two since I don't have a one or six with a one and a two around it. So unfortunately, two places for the six. Sleuth, how about some Sudoku? Come on, that's not eight, that's not nine, that was an eight. Therefore, that's a four, this is not seven. It's not an eight either, I've already placed it, that's a nine. This is a six, seven pair, both of which work. This is now not one or four, this is two or three. meaning there's a four in here and this four tells me that's the four. There's a four in one of these two, which I kind of knew already. It's not helpful, not revelationary. 
2 and 3 means there is a 1 in here. This is also another 3, 4. The 1, well, can be joined with anything. So I was thinking, I was misinterpreting. I was thinking it has to be with a 7, but that's not true. Not true at all. This is not 6 or 9. This is 7 or 8. Uh, 8 is down here. So this is 6 or 7. And this could be any of them. So one of these is 8. Meaning, and there's no 9 in here. No 9 in there. That's the 9. This is actually all... I do know the colors now. This is orange. This is blue orange blue just looking at the fact that i've already placed all the blues this is a run of seven eight and nine don't know what these are that's two i didn't mean to do that that's two three three still works could that that's that could be a seven and then a six with a two up here so nothing breaks unfortunately have I done the fives? No. Look at this. Four. Yes, I will do the fives. So this was potentially a five. If it was a five, I would have needed a four in the column. So that's not five. That's the five. That's the five. Excuse me. That's the five. And therefore, that's blue. And... It needs to be 9 and 1. That's the 1. That's back to orange. I've got 4 blues in this row. That's orange. That's blue. That's all looking good. I've got... F no. Oh, that has to be... So if the minimum is 6, this is the maximum of 3. So that has to be blue. And I've actually got 4 oranges in here that I've just ignored for some reason. So that's blue. That's orange. That blue and that's the entire grid colored come on sleuth let's finish this five one nine let's just surround all the fives when we can because they give us digits that's not a one now that's excuse me that's the one i say surround all the fives and then it took all of like three seconds so <laughs> that was a very that was a very disappointing surround nines not in there that's a nine this is a seven eight pair and I guess whichever one is the 4 goes with an 8. Whichever one is the 7 will have to be with a 3. Got another 7, 8 up here with another 3, 4. That's the 3, 4. One of these is a 7, 8 and one of these is a 6. And unfortunately I can still do a 6 with a 2 and an 8 and a 7 and a 1. So no real revelations there. Um, I probably do know this one. So this is not 6. This is 2. It's not 8. Uh, so it's 7. Sorry, 7. If I can type, this is a 2. That's a 3. That's a 8. That 3 gives me the 4 now. The 3, which has to be with a 7. The 4 with an 8. Uh, it doesn't help me in here, does it? This is, well, 3, 4, and 2. That is a 1. That's not the 1. Meaning, I can't have a 6 in here anymore. I could have done 2 and 1, but the 1 is gone. So that's the 6. That's the other 7, 8. That 8 gives me this 7. This 7 goes with a 3 in here. That's got to be an 8. That's a 2 to finish. That's a 3. That could be a ton of things, isn't it? It's not 6, though. It could be 7. That's 7. That's 6. That's 7. That's 6, forcing a 2 in here. And then a three. Come on, this is going fairly quickly now. It's going. Three, four. Well, actually, I knew this. This is a four. This is a three because of that three up there. That three is next to an eight because there's a seven. This is seven or eight. I don't actually know which one is which. So moving on. <laughs> This is not 1 or 3, it's 2 or 4. 4 is too close. That's a 2. I need 3 and 4 in here. A 4 can't be next to a 7. That's a 3. That's a 4. That's got to be the 6. 6 can't be next to a 3. 
and finish this box off. That's an eight, four, three, one. Just Sudoku now, just powering us through, really. That can't be a six in this column. That's got to be the six. That's the nine. I need seven and eight in here. Eight, well, seven can't be next to the four, so that's the eight. That's the seven. That's the nine. That's the four. Just again, Sudoku. One and two in here. That one tells me the order. That's one. That's two. That's not one. That's one. I mean, technically, that's two. And unfortunately, that still means I can still have a six in here. So not exactly helping. That's a four. That's got to be an eight from nine, six, and eight. I mean, from the seven and eight. Can't have a seven next to a four. So that's seven. That's six. That wasn't five. This is two or three. We've got th two in here. That's three. That's two. That's six in the column. This is seven or eight. That eight tells us it's a seven, eight. Right, very nearly there. Why am I struggling? Six. And then if I've not made any mistakes, seven and the finish for today's puzzle. Lovely puzzle, Will. I think, so I'm just thinking about it. It was easier than I expected. But I don't know if I got lucky or you're just leading us that way. So I think the fives you are clearly leading us by having uncharacteristic of your puzzles, four different fives placed. You're clearly shouting out, take a look at fives. And then the one five in here, the five nine in there, it took me a long time to realize the 14 must have a five on it. And then the five, but not on a T junction was ingenious, like really clever stuff then having these fives for a duration for quite some time to actually solve. But I think once you place these fives, and I guess once you place that one, more importantly, you can very quickly color all of these. And it just collapsed very quickly from there. So I think, I don't think it was luck. I think it's just the placement of these fives and listening to the clues that have been given by the constructor. It's the only reason it felt approachable. Hope that you guys enjoyed the puzzle. I know I loved it and the video and see you back for the next one. Bye for now.